Hey there, Jonathan here. In this video, I'm going to show you one of the campaigns that we ran for one of our e-commerce clients. And um, a lot of people do Facebook advertising and stuff, but we've gotten managed to uh, retain uh, 25 ROAS over this time period. It's over a month or so. Uh, and I think we are quite satisfied with the result. So um, I know every single, uh, like different businesses use Facebook ads for different things and the results and the returns will be different. But then these are just some of the strategies that my agency has been using for some of our clients. And uh, we've been happy with it. So I'm going to share, show with you some of them and maybe you can implement it into your business as well. Okay, so uh, let's get right back into the computer and uh, I'm just gonna show you uh, what we've been doing. Yep, okay. Uh, so Jonathan here back in uh, just in uh, this is basically business manager for Facebook right just gonna show you a few statistics on what we did with this campaign so um, running from the period between December 16 to around January 22nd so that's give or take around five weeks or so uh, in terms of uh, client acquisition and budget wise um, as you can see here we spent around like uh, okay let me just refresh this um, yeah Spent around five hundred and ninety-five dollars, so around six hundred dollars. Not, not really, not very aggressive at all, uh, in terms of um the budget-wise. So like in terms of scaling up, I'm very optimistic about what we can do, uh, on this campaign and on further accounts, right? So um as you can see here, I mean in general, uh, think of it as uh, so this is an e-commerce client, right? And um it's not a low-ticket product, so probably uh price ranges from around four hundred uh, to a thousand dollars, right? So asking someone to actually pull out their wallet on a four hundred dollar product, uh, online, I mean it's it's really quite something to get this type of numbers so that's what i'm showing to you uh so as you can see here we reach around eighteen thousand people um let's see what's important um you see cost per result so imagine um a lot of it a lot of these um products we're selling on the front end offer meaning um it's the low ticket stuff we haven't even gotten to the high ticket stuff so in terms of profit potential among these audiences in the future these are like eighteen thousand people right i see there's a lot of potential to grow and uh, get uh, extract as much profit as possible yeah so as you can see here spend around six hundred dollars and then got back around 15,000 so that's like a 25 row s right a return on investment so um, this is basically if you spend a dollar in you get a 25 back so um, like I was really impressed by these figures because uh, consistently throughout the board right so this um, we launched around two ad sets in this area and um, so we've been running consistently throughout uh, the month right we've never slipped up we've never decreased the budget one bit it has always been uh, our, we always put it stay stagnant first or we increase the budget when we think um, the thing is going well and uh, Facebook's algorithm is um, doing well okay so I mean um, cost per click and stuff people like to see it right people like to analyze numbers and stuff but but uh, we only care about conversions. So uh, to us, it's not that important, right? It doesn't matter if I'm paying $1 or $3 per cost per click, but I'm getting uh, conversions. Right, that, that that's really what we're focused on. Okay, so I mean, in in general, as you can see, like the stats are not very uh, impressive, right? In terms of um, the other stats, in terms of like cost per click and click link. Um, I mean, the CTR is quite average, right? Around three, three to seven percent. Um, but then the cl uh, link click through is, is really very average, very below average as, as well. Okay, in terms of CPMs, you can just see here. Okay, so let's just go into one of these campaigns. Uh, so this one is a, a larger ad set, right? It's probably around 50,000 uh, 50, people in this ad set. And um, I think what we did well in this ad set is we uh, split tested a lot, meaning uh, we were very aggressive in our testing. And that's, I guess, one of the things that we learned that I'm gonna talk about later is that we split test every single placement and we optimize the media for it. So basically, like for example, as you can see here, right? Uh, Facebook feeds, we definitely uh, put different media that's optimized for the feed, optimized for Insta feed. So every single um, placement on Facebook has different dimensions, right? So that's what we did, right? We didn't want to skim on the quality of the video or the photo that we we're putting out. So as you can see uh, across the board, right? I mean, the frequency is around the same and cost per result is quite consistent. Okay, so later I'm gonna show you uh, a few of the, the ad level sets. This is the ad set level. And um, in terms of CPM, as you can see, we're doing very well as well. I mean, to get a $5 CPM, uh, basically amount of money you spend to get in front of a thousand customers, I think we were really happy to, to maintain that uh, throughout the month, okay? So as you can see here, um, Instagram and Facebook. Facebook is generally more profitable for us, but in terms of the ROAS, right? I mean, it's quite consistently the same. The, the net revenue is um, is larger for Facebook, but uh, Instagram, it's ROAS is around the same. So we're quite, quite, really, really quite happy about that, okay? So as you can see here as well, like, um, this campaign is off right now, but then we were all running Facebook feed and Instagram feed, okay? So we actually split tested into Facebook suggested feed because uh, we like the placement of uh, a large 16 by 9 video or 1 by 1 video going in and Insta story as well. But then uh, we weren't managing to get, uh, I guess, very good results at the first place. So we decided to kill the ad set uh, at first. In terms of Facebook suggested feed, uh, after a while, basically after we turn off the ad set, then we got the conversion, okay? So I mean, this 66 is really impressive, but uh, it's not indicative of what we were experiencing 
existing at first, okay? It was a subsequent attribution uh, purchase on our end, okay? As you can see here, uh, I'm gonna go into Facebook feed. Uh, Facebook feed, um, every single one of these ads site, we, we really spit test the heck out of it. We really like go go in depth into one, two, three, four, uh, four, five, six, seven, around seven ads per. I mean, we 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 planning to go like ten per, right? But in terms of budget wise, uh, we use something called budget optimization, which is basically give Facebook uh, a certain amount of money, and then they will they will basically distribute the budget into certain ad sets that are working very well. Like we really like that um that um basically that setting on Facebook. So that's what we did as well. Okay. Uh, as you can see here, also I think what we did well was the relevance score in terms of like our messaging was really really inclined and really uh, hyper targeted to our audience. So in terms of the bid auction wise, right, competing with other competitors in the space, we didn't have to increase and spend a lot of money like forty fifty dollar ad sets per to get the result that we wanted because we were already winning on the end of uh, our creative was just better than everybody else, right? Uh, we had original video, original photos. Uh, so I think we really beat our competitors on that end. That's why we were able to maintain uh, these types of relevant scores. At, at one point it was all 10 as well. So I was really, really happy with that. Okay, so I mean, as you can see here, uh, in general, there's always a winner, right? You can split test a lot of things, but generally there's a winner. So in this, in this, uh, these ads, right? Uh, this photo right here, it, it was our winner, right? It got us, um, the, the higher ticket items as well as getting 70 row ads over, okay? So I mean, of course, uh, these other things, these other photos and videos as well, we decided to maintain them because uh, they, were, they were profitable, right? So of course you, you start, you maintain your profitable ad sets and ads and then you kill the rest. So that's what we did, right? Uh, after a while, we just killed these. Okay, I would like to show you what we did on the Instagram side of things as well. So let me just show you the Instagram feed. Um, in the Instagram feed, as you can see, the CPMs are generally lower than Facebook because it's definitely cheaper to run on Instagram because uh, audiences are likely less profitable, okay? Uh, so as you can see here, we only um, put out one Instagram feed ad because we didn't like Generally, my agency, we don't like photos on Instagram because we think uh, from the user perspective, uh, user experience perspective, right? Uh, people generally don't even care about photos. Like they'll just scroll through their feed. I mean, I I'm a millennial myself, so I'm guilty of it. So in terms of like uh, user behavior, that's what uh, we were thinking. And uh, yeah, that's what we st stuck to. So as you can see, a relevant score, uh, 10. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're really happy about the Instagram side of things as well. Yeah, getting around 25 row S. Okay. So uh, that's about it from the, the ads manager side of things. This is what uh, I guess you can say of what a $15,000 campaign looks like. It's a relatively small amount, but um, in terms of um, the overall perspective wise, I feel our, our, our targeting, our messaging, as well as our ad creative was really on point for this. And uh, to be able to maintain like a six to five dollar uh, cost per purchase, right? Over like a $400 product, right? Uh, we are really happy about that, okay? And the best thing about it is that, uh, for example, if you find a winner, right? You actually can come into rules and then you can set an automated rule such that uh, Facebook can actually alert you to when this happens or when it crosses uh, above a point, right? Such that it becomes unprofitable or where it's a point where you don't wanna pay up to that lead or up to that result, right? So it actually uh, really allows you to optimize your time as well as to um, I guess focus on things that are like creating the best ad possible uh, focus on your copywriting and stuff so I think that's a really great addition to uh, Facebook's feature okay so I'm just gonna go uh, into our some of the things that we've learned Okay, so in terms of uh, the broad strategies that I can talk about, because uh, I can't go in, into depth of every single uh, mindset, right? Uh, and what type of decision making that we did in terms of running our ads. Uh, these are, I guess, the, the top three things that we really saw that uh, I think you can really implement your business, right? Really use it when you're doing your Facebook ads as well, when you're uh, running and getting leads for your own business, okay? So number one will be test all the time. Number two, uh, optimize your data and optimize your media. So I'm just gonna explain uh, what those means. Okay, so uh, test all the time, meaning like we really, really were on the onset, uh, really set on being very aggressive because we understand how Facebook works. Like you have to really let the market decide what and how good your ad is, right? So in terms of the creative, your photo, your video, whatever media it is, uh, really ensure it's very captivating and engaging for the audience, okay? That's number one. Number two, copywriting. Uh, always have in your headline together, be something that will hook the audience at first, right? And uh, there's multiple audiences. So you have definitely have to test multiple audiences, right? Because the market is so big, not everyone resonates with your message, but allow Facebook's algorithm and AI to really work in your favor, right? So the, like, the job as the marketer and as, a, as an, a media agency on ourselves, right? Right. Um, what we do for our clients is really be able to test as much as possible within our uh, restricted budgets so to get the maximum ROI results for our customers, right? That's ultimately our end goal with advertising. So uh, it'll be unfair if you don't really try to test multiple audiences and see what works, okay? 
uh, then the last thing would be to test multiple placements as well so as you can see in our ad set previously right we really segmented our our ads into um, different segments right so uh, a lot of people just plug everything like for example they, they open one ad set and the entire ad set uses all placements audience network uh, facebook messenger facebook feed right uh generally what I, I i don't like doing that because i am unable to identify what is really uh what is happening and what is working and what is not so which placement is not working so well so that's that's just me and that's just uh what, what my agency likes to do okay so that's uh yeah that's just my side of it Okay, uh, second thing would be optimize the data, right? So in terms of like what people mean by data optimization is generally what, just let the data speak to you, right? Never guess and never get too attached to an ad. So as a marketer, you spend a lot of time creating the ad and like that was so invested into the photos and videos and copywriting and really understand the customer persona, right? But if the ad really doesn't work for your audience, right? Never, I feel that we uh, oftentimes you get attached to an ad. So just turn off the ad and um, just, just move on, right? Just let the data uh, make and decide and dictate your decision making okay never guess about what the data and what the market uh, thinks is good okay okay number two would be uh, give the ad set time to run so usually what people do is um, maintain the profitable ads and then kill your unprofitable ad sets i mean that's quite common sense but in a sense also it's uh give the ad set time to run so there's always this active learning uh process where facebook's algorithm runs where there's ai running in the background right it needs uh, a few sample sizes to understand uh, what type of audiences work best for your ad so uh, in terms of that, we get generally give around two to three days for the ad to run, and then uh, we'll see uh, different metrics, right? Uh, cost per result or a link click through rate or whatever. Okay, so generally, if there's no purchase yet, I'll, I'll look at the link click through rate as well as the relevant score uh, to see how the ad performs. And uh, if it's underperforming to, I, I guess, my standards as well, then I'll just turn off the ad set. Okay, yeah. So that's basically uh, optimized data. Uh, last thing that you could potentially use would be optimized media, right? So there's a lot of placements on Facebook. Um, so there's like audience networks, I said, Messenger, Facebook feed, uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram story, Instagram feed. I don't think IGTV has uh, placement as well, right? But the thing is, I feel a lot of marketers, um, a lot of agencies as well, they don't really use um, Instagram and Facebook on their own, right? Like really understanding what the user perspective is and what the audience is. Imagine you are, you're seeing a lot of friends and families on a platform and you're being advertised to. You're not really happy about being advertised to, right? So really try to like uh, create content that is engaging for your audience and that is really, really something that they want to see instead of being bombarded by ads, right? Like just buy my product, right? That's really disrespectful to the sales process that I believe and uh, it's something that definitely won't get you conversions at all right okay so optimized media so for example i i put up this mock-up right uh, because like i see a lot of ads like i i'm a millennial myself and i see a lot of like instagram ads so uh when i see this type of thing where people have like this amount of real estate and then they just use this one particular small little piece of portion of space to advertise their product and stuff i'm really really puzzled about what they're thinking right why not just use the entire real estate space and speak the audience uh, speak to your audience and like resonate with your uh, message right right so there's story audience network feed there are different dimensions so just follow facebook's uh, dimensions and uh play the game yeah Okay, so really understanding what the dimensions are as well as the user experience. Stop trying to sell people things all the time. Sometimes you have to give value. That's that's how you 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 basically um, convert on Facebook, right? I feel like it's like very very similar to sales. How digital marketing is, you have to build a relationship with your audience, then you're able to sell them at the uh, afterwards, right? You create rapport and stuff. Okay, so uh, yeah. So basically, like I feel a lot of people don't even use the platform themselves and uh, I guess uh, call themselves like really good at Facebook advertising and stuff. I think you should really try the platform out yourself and understand like what, what is the human psychology behind uh, Facebook and Instagram, right? Yeah, so um, it's really, really understanding what the user wants and what they will reject. Okay, of course they will reject things that are constantly pushing them in the face. Everyone doesn't like uh, someone uh, constantly selling to them all the time. So uh, yeah, that's about it. So that's uh, just a few, I guess, our, our broad strategies for what uh, my agency has been doing. Uh, hope you've learned something from this video and as well as can uh, be able to implement it into your ads as well. Okay. All right, so that's, I've come to the end of, uh, I guess, my video. And uh, I guess these are just the three pointers that I really want you to know. Just to recap, so, uh, constantly test all your ads all the time you never uh, you never know what the market uh, favors and what it does not favor okay number two optimize your data so see your data and let the data speak to you never guess and never really forecast what is going to happen okay number three optimize your media okay uh, facebook is literally you're paying facebook to literally like show some things online so why not use and utilize all the real estate 
real estate space that you have to really captivate your audience, okay? I hope you've um, uh, enjoyed this video and uh, gained some value from it. So um, thank you so much for watching. Yep, uh, we'll see you soon.